This is Maruma 2 and you are watching Sun Soul Astrology and this is a daily planetary translation for June the 24th 2017 and today is part two of the new moon in Cancer. Hopefully yesterday was a great day of new beginnings and we have a lot to talk about today as well. I am going to give that reminder that I am celebrating six months of being on YouTube and doing these daily planetary translations for all of you. And so I am running a flash sale active until tomorrow night at midnight Pacific Standard Time, the 25th of June. And I am taking $40 off of my natal and progress chart readings. So when you go to the show more section of this video and you go ahead and link to my calendar to book that appointment, you are going to see the sale price listed, which is $80. And yeah, I mean, it's just absolutely, thank you so much for giving me this platform. I'm super grateful, super humbled, and I love connecting with you all. So it's always a good time. And another note is that the flash sale is going on until the 25th at midnight, but you are welcome to book for any time in the future. I am pretty busy, so I do get booked up about a week in advance most of the time these days. So absolutely, you don't have to book within the window of till the 25th. Take advantage of whenever you like, okay? So today at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2100 Universal Time, the collective sun is going to be at 3 degrees and 33 minutes of Cancer. And the collective moon is going to be, guess where? Oh, hey, it's going to be exactly conjunct the star Sirius that we spoke so much about yesterday at 14 degrees of Cancer. And the funny part about this is Mars is at 13 degrees still, and um, I've mentioned this week that my natal Saturn is in Cancer at 14 degrees in the fourth house. So today, I personally am experiencing Mars conjunct the moon, conjunct my natal Saturn, and it's like, wow, because all of this is in an opposition to Pluto, like what? Yeah, so I don't know what's going to happen to me. <laughs> Hopefully I make it right. I definitely am not one to fear the transits because, you know, it's like you can transcend your chart and you're not a victim of these things any longer because, you know, you're in line with your path. But, you know, they still do express themselves. And as a collective, we're going through this readjustment and this re- invigoration of bringing our emotions and our empathy to the surface and really showing people what we're made of so we went in depth yesterday thank you for all of you who you know tucked that one out with me it's just there's a lot that needed to be said in reference to emotions and this quality of empathy a lot of people just don't want to feel it don't want to acknowledge it and those of us who are strong empaths it's hard to function in the world, you know? It's like sometimes for some, it's really difficult for them to just go to the grocery store and be around other people that have energy projecting towards them. And you know, it's like, I definitely love to always go back to Dolores Cannon. So some of you have heard this so many times, but she really does equate people to background people and they're just like that computer simulated integrated you know uh, decoration I mean I don't want to be like elitist and rude about that but yeah I mean we live in a hologram right and so we have to basically keep up with appearances and believe that the simulation that we're experiencing as life is actually legit so a lot of the people that do surround us aren't even real. They're just those holographic projections. And so I look at the world through that filter and it really does help me to not pick up on those vibrations. And especially, you know, I never had like an awakening process. I've always been 
awake and aware of everything. So I've had a long time to really master the art of protection and the use and reception of energy. Because there is an on and an off switch. We don't have to stay on all the time. We don't have to pick it up every single moment of every single day. Yes, so here's the thing. The sun and Mercury, they are still in this very tight conjunction. We're still having this stimulation of the processing of the mind. Mercury is now at seven degrees. As I mentioned, Mars is now at 13 degrees. So this is getting pretty tight with the Mercury and Mars conjunction. And now adding this moon into this really tight orb, you know, this exact expression, um, we are really, I mean, those star seeds who are from Sirius are absolutely just getting like nervous system overloads, absolute profound dreams. You know, we didn't really go into it yesterday, but Mars is in a trine to Neptune and it's coming up to an exact. The moon is exact trining Neptune today. So Neptune and Pisces retrograde, right? It really makes us want to give this whole other meaning to the expression of life and give us this consciousness that's bred from this higher divine source. And that's what we talked about a lot yesterday is not being satisfied by the surface events by really being driven and determined to look deeper and explore what's on that underneath of, you know, whatever is appearing to you is solid on the outside. It's like, it's so not about that. So here it's our dreams are being heavily influenced. Our collective consciousness as a feedback loop. If you're not from Sirius, you're still getting upgrades because those star seeds who are here on this planet from that location are absolutely feeding this collective. You know, it's like we all are, absolutely everyone, every single one of us. So with this respect, you know, we're definitely receiving these out of the blue messages. That's what Neptune retrograde is all about. And they really are coming from a true place. And so it's our job to really pay attention to that inner voice and that inner wisdom and not just discount it as, you know, crazy cray cray experiences or, you know, who the fuck am I to have this grandiose thought of, you know, a new invention or a new way of presenting information to the public, right? And to the collective. So. Mars and the moon here, it's like, you know, yesterday, again, we talked so much about those emotions, and today we're seeing where we have been blocked and where we've been resistant to these changes that we really needed to make. And this is where people in our lives might be showing us this resistance. A lot of these aspects can really lend to a feeling of being disconnected from your loved ones and your intimate partnerships. And then as we've been talking about, there's so many other aspects that make you want to get closer, want to make you merge, want to make you get into those depths with people. And so it can be a bit of a confusing experience, but again, we're leading up to this full moon coming in Capricorn. And yeah, everything is Plutonian, it's Martian, <laughs> it's again Scorpio. Profound, right? It's like so crazy. So yeah, the main things that I want to talk about today is how we are having this exact square from Mars to Jupiter and also the Mars trine to Neptune and opposition to Pluto. So Mars is absolutely making some major power plays in the sky. And we do need to take note of what is going on here because again, it's building to create a bigger picture for all of us to bear witness to, right? So whenever we get into this Mars-Pluto opposition, remember that they both co-rule Scorpio. So this is a unified team right here. 
And again, oppositions make you blatantly aware of what is in front of you. What is that difficulty or that obstacle? And because we're talking about the transformative energies of Pluto, and we're talking about the passionate energy of Mars, just like we talked about yesterday during that breakdown of the Sabian symbol, it's like, seriously, like, who cares if there's obstacles and difficulties standing in front of you? Like, so what? Just let that be an extra element of, like, gusto. Prove yourself, prove to yourself, and prove to everyone else that opposition doesn't mean the same thing to you. You know, you're not someone that just gives up or turns around and walks away. That you actually do go out into, you know, that battlefield to basically go to those extreme lengths to come to this victory. You know, and right now it's like victory of the soul, victory of the mind, victory of the body. You know, victory of the impasse, not apologizing for being empathetic any longer, not apologizing for just knowing, you know? And it's funny because a lot of times people don't like to see other people succeed and they don't like to see other people who are emotionally intelligent, who know themselves, who are strong, who are proud. And a lot of times those people who have self-doubts and um, low self-worth, they start projecting onto the other people in their lives who are very strong and abundant. And if we tend to believe them, then it's just like this really kind of like a spiral out of control in your own downward rabbit hole where you start to believe those things and then you you the wind the wind gets taken out of your sails right so with mars and pluto anytime they start to interact we start to talk about primal and sexual energies i mean that's scorpio all day again right and pluto definitely well and mars too <laughs> It's like there's this energy of competition that can come out. But the best person to be in competition with is yourself. In competition with your last efforts. So that you're constantly evolving to a higher, you know, refinement. So, okay, I got this far this time. Next time I apply my efforts, I'm going to go completely all out. Because this is where we also pick up the skills of tactics and strategies, you know? So it's like, good luck trying to play like a Scorpio, right? And this is because they've already peeped game from so many different perspectives that they, it's like chess, you know? And they're so far ahead and they don't reveal their, their hands to you. They have poker faces, right? Trying to get it to know a Scorpio is, <sighs> it's tough, you know? And I understand this. They, it's like, we don't want to reveal our secrets. And I was, you know, making the comparison with cancer the other day. Cancer will really let you know, you know? They'll tell you straight up what's going on in their emotional world, how they feel about you. And that's, you know, whenever, it's, it depends on how that's received, on how the future moves with a cancer. <laughs> but Scorpios, they're going to put you through the ringers. They're going to definitely make you work for any sort of information that they have that tells you who they really are. You know, so it's something that I work on myself because my nature is to withhold how I feel about someone. So... You know, I could be looking at someone that I love and just saying in my head, like, I love you, 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 like a million times. And then it turns out that I've never said it out loud, like one time ever. <laughs> and then they have to ask, like, do you even love me? And it's like, yeah, like kind of obsessed, you know? And um, yeah, <laughs> so it's different because, you know, we are, being strategic in our defense, again, <laughs> broken record, 
Um, yeah, this discernment that I keep talking about with Scorpio and going underneath the veil, it also has to do with picking out weak spots, you know? It's like, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So, that can be applied to everything in your life. You know, so inside yourself, you're only as strong as your weakest organ or your most fucked up cell. And that is so important to remember because, you know, yesterday we were really talking about how we are quantum biological computers. You know, we are transmitting information that we receive from the cosmos. And yes, 100%. Our DNA actually reprograms itself based on our emotional vibrations. And that's what I was talking about as well. It's like sound is this vibration, you know, and our DNA is this double helix that has this motion that turns it into this beautiful sacred geometry. And we are like an ancient expression of sound, vibration, and geometry. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's the dodecahedron that our DNA is representing. And our quantum field, our auric field, our etheric field, same thing, different word, that is our five-star tetrahedron, you know? Toroidal forces, same as a DNA sequence spinning. Whenever we tap into this information and know, you know, this is scientifically backed, our emotions depict how our DNA programs itself in sequences. So if we are unhappy, then obviously our cells are going to program themselves to be diseased and disordered. Whenever we talk about Mars and Pluto again, we talk about fight or flight. And we discussed this again yesterday. <laughs> Sorry for sounding so repetitive on certain aspects, but it's like, you know, it's just a, a deeper layer that we need to go into. There was so much information that I couldn't even get to certain aspects. So we're going into it today, but it cross-references all of it. You know, um, fight or flight, you also release a shit ton of adrenaline. <laughs> and that definitely affects your nervous system. And you go into fear, right? And we go into fight or flight in the most basic of situations. If you turn off a light in your bedroom and you're walking just to get in bed, you are in a state of fight or flight because you, you are only thinking about what can I stub my toe on? What can I trip over? What am I gonna bang my knee on? It's like the what if of the wrongs, <laughs> like how am I going to get like destroyed like three steps from the bed, right? Just because the fucking lights are off. And that's what we're seeing here. But if we can change our perceptions, if we can change how we emotionally resonate our vibrations, if we can use our transformative energies and our passions once again in the correct manner, then we're gonna come into these deep physical and creative pursuits. Pluto is so awesome. <laughs> I love Pluto. I fucking love Pluto. You know, cause it's like, yeah, take that underworld and just fucking destroy everything that is holding you back. And then build a brand new foundation. And we can do that with so much like passion and desire and courage and determination and just like, you know, and like, <laughs> I go a little crazy on there, like, but yes. So <laughs> put your defenses and your strategies in the correct place and Put your intentions in the right place as well whenever it comes to this because we're just going to see what direction we need to go. Oppositions, squares, they don't have to be a negative experience. It can be very positive. So whenever it comes to Mars in the square to Jupiter, this is also where we come into some... Um, 
<laughs> sexual vibrations once again because Jupiter expands everything that it is in contact with and here it's in contact with Mars. So our libidos might definitely rise as they have been rising already. And at the same time, <laughs> this is going to make us once again a bit more competitive, right? It's like we, we have this fire, we wanna go and we're gonna push towards it. So we're like feisty and again, we're like, you know, like, come on, let's go, like, let's get this on the road, you know? And because of those higher aspects of Jupiter, this Mars prowess is actually seeking this higher version of relationships. It's like, don't give in to me right away. You know, make love to my mind and my soul before you ever touch my body. Like, strip my consciousness and my vulnerability completely naked and raw before you ever actually see my flesh naked in front of you. You know, so it's like, this is gonna spice everything up, but at the same time, this is where all of our battle scars become sexy. You know, it's, I've been talking about it for a long time that that's the most inspiring thing ever is to see people who stand up and really show themselves after they've been through some complete and total shit. You know, and we have battle scars. It's like, look, I'm missing a piece of my eye socket. Yeah, like where did it go? It didn't come out. But <laughs> these are kind of like our trophies of life. <laughs> you know, soldiers and warriors, they're happy. You know, whenever they get another fucking scar to add to their collection, it's like tattoos for some of us, right? And it's not showing that you went through hell, it's showing that you survived. And yeah, we don't have to hide those things right now from potential partners or our intimate relationships. Survivors are sexy as fuck, you know, because you can't survive those lower vibrations unless you have wisdom and knowledge and the light that shines, that connection to the cosmos that Jupiter talks about. So, you know, this square here is definitely invigorating us to produce some experiences in life and why not you know absolutely why the hell not now interesting to note is that both jupiter and mars are making aspects to neptune right we still have the quincunx of neptune to jupiter so again bend or break what are we gonna do <laughs> take off the blinders you know, it's a very important thing to do. Take off the blinders because that's what Neptune retrograde is about. It's about seeing through the illusions and the delusions, distinguishing between dreams that are helpful and the ones that are just kind of like fantasy ridden. And also, you know, it's a time that we need to learn to trust our intuitions and really grounded into our personality centered level and whenever we do that that's like everything that that jupiter retrograde just put us through listening to that inner wisdom trusting that inner voice following the inner light the spiritual cultivation <laughs> so now it's like yeah here it is in the world with all of its uniqueness and its quirky attitudes and weird shit you know it's like Weird science is absolutely playing out right now, but it can bring us to our true fulfillment. Absolutely, that's definitely an offering that Jupiter retro or Neptune retrograde is giving us. So yeah, let's be flexible in that. And it's flexibility and relationships and what we're dreaming and conceiving of. It's just being brought down a notch into some more realistic versions of things. And as well, we're gonna talk about um, the moon in the opposition to Pluto, right? Because we've been talking about this aspects. How much more can we have right now? But anywho, yeah, so the moon in Cancer, again, it's at home, right? And Pluto is like, hey, fucking change right and do it in the opposite way that you would normally do it it's a reflection 
of that vibration, you know, Cancer Capricorn access. So, okay, I need, I need to do this Pluto regeneration, but the moon doesn't always feel comfortable in that aspect. And so this is where we're seeing some of these um, interpersonal depths in the blockages that are possibly expressing themselves to us. Because, you know, it's like, it's, it's hard to speak your truth, but it's hard to hear you, the truth of the people who are in your life that need for you to change with them. Yeah. <laughs> so expect to have a bit more sensitivity as this happens and expect to definitely have a even further depth into your emotional field than you already have right now. It's like extra feels, right? But it is to bring up the regeneration process on the deepest fucking cellular level that we have. And that's the Planck scale, right? The Swallows quantum measurement is the Planck scale. And Damned if that didn't prove that we actually are living inside of a black hole and not only that, but every freaking atom in our body is a black hole of its own unique nature. And 50 to 100 billion atoms in our body? Are you kidding me? It's so deep. It is so deep. So to go that deep, wow, we really do need Mars in the sign of cancer with that fucking submarine going to depths that we just absolutely never even conceived of. And who knows what we're gonna find under all those layers. And it's really amazing because that's where we once again meet ourselves at the level of sacred geometry, realize how fucking Fibonacci sequenced we really are. I mean, we're so fucking like grand, eloquently designed epically fucking constructed it's so true yeah so let's get into some good stuff because mars and this trying to neptune right it's definitely giving us some idealistic versions of how we can alter our story and how we can really tap into our heart in order to bring this about you know, it's like our heart and our brain produce the highest amount of electromagnetic energy of anything, and our heart more so. So the true place of manifestation really comes from how we connect with our heart, how we allow the energy to flow through the center. Because, you know, if you are a Reiki practitioner or you're familiar with these, you know, energetic healing modalities, you have to be open in that heart center. You have to allow that energy to flow through your chest, your shoulders, your arms, your elbows, your forearms, your wrists, your palms, your fingers. It's, it's like the whole nine yards, you know? And then you have to focus on how the accumulated energy in your body is flowing through, you know? So it's like we've accumulated so much suffering and such a high level of absorption of other people's energetic shit. And sometimes we haven't been present within our own awareness. So we've actually been etherically implanted with some Archon implants, you know? And it's like on this higher dimensional field where we are not recognizing that our actual like creator force energy is leaking out of our etheric holes, you know, and other beings on you know, the mirror dimension for all you who are out there like me who fucking obsess over Doctor Strange. It's like within that mirror dimension, we're being watched, you know, we're not. <laughs> it's a massive. Um, there is more behind the scenes in that unseen world, you know, the dark matter of this universe. And there is with our visible universe, you know, 95 <laughs> percent of what we experience in this physical experience is matter you know 95 percent of it is unseen dark matter quantum realm experience so whenever we put our personal aims and our strategies into the correct focus that we've been talking about mars is all about that 
You know, think of it as the warrior on the battlefield. You cannot go into battle unless you have a plan, alternate strategic gameplays, right? And supplies. It's like crazy. <laughs> yeah, so our basically, like our point of focus is how do we affect the global community in the least destructive way, right? Because not everybody is ready to wake up. And how do we do it without causing harm to ourselves? You know, because it's, it's, it's a process. And the answer is, Scorpio again, <laughs> to go behind that veil, you know, peek under the covers. It's like you see um, those pictures, the paintings where it's like, you know, somebody's lifting up the ocean waves or lifting up the skyline view and looking underneath the curtain that we experience as our visual world. You know, look behind the veil. Learn to share your energy and approach this global problem with a quantum solution. You know, because we all know what the issue is, whether we face it or not, you know, but let's talk about some solutions. Let's come up with some alternate ways. Let's stop being insane as a collective and just continuing to do the same thing over and over again while expecting a new response. That's insanity, right? But we're talking about this shared, collected experience that is connected through the plank, through the feedback loop, all of it. So, yeah. And you know, um, you definitely today do need to beef up your own personal psychic security system and yeah whenever neptune starts to really aspect a lot of energies it's still in the sextile to pluto also um we definitely just need to put on that extra layer right and really make sure that we are um again listening to our intuitions and not leaking our creator source energy out of these um, etheric holes in our auras or you know these places within our chakra system so adopt some more neptunian ways of going about that as it's retrograded once again so yeah let us move on to some more good stuff because it's like shit thank god i do this every day i can, I, I honestly i don't know how other astrologers do like an entire weekly forecast in 20 minutes. I mean, is that's not like a triple water aspect of mine expressing itself as it like, yeah, there is no simple way for me to say shit. Like I have to like really like go into it, paint a picture, like make you feel my words like I feel words, you know? So it's, it's intense, but yeah. <laughs> so going back to this activation of Sirius, we did talk about it a lot yesterday, how Isis and Osiris are playing out with the archetype of Hermes and all of this ancient initiated schools of wisdom. And you know, there is such thing called as the Isis cult and it's still alive and well today. You know, a while back I touched on Aleister Crowley and this is kind of what he was going off of also. I don't want to um, get deep into it just like last time, but uh, that's a Scorpio thing. And if you are peeping my game out there, you guys will pick up on that vibration and you will actually look into that on your own because it's like the dun dun dun. Like what don't I share? So if I'm not sharing that information, that should be like, why? Why is she not sharing that information? I need to know everything about it. Yeah. Because I actually want to read you a quote from Alice Bailey and her book, Initiation, um, Human and Solar, talks about Sirius. And she quotes, All that can be done here in dealing with this profound subject is to immensurate enumerate, sorry, <laughs> all that can be done here in dealing with this profound subject is to enumerate briefly some of the cosmic influences 
which definitely affect our earth and produce results in the consciousness of men everywhere, and which, during the process of initiation, bring about certain specific phenomena. First and foremost is the energy or force emanating from the sun Sirius. If it must be so expressed, the energy of thought or mind force in its totality reaches a solar system from a distant cosmic center via Sirius. Sirius acts as the transmitter or the focal point center. Where it's eminent, eminent, those influences emanate, excuse me, my contacts are drying up, so it's blurry, yeah. Whence emanate those influences which produce consciousness of self in man. And that's deep AF, like legit, right? Because that's everything we were talking about yesterday with the conjunction of sun, moon, mercury, and mind, body, soul, and what the cosmos are doing to us when they shine their light down. They're breeding our consciousness of self into us. It's like we are the avatar flesh suits of the sky bodies. Why is that even like not a part of our shared reality of consciousness that's taught from a basic conceptual point of view? It trips me out. But yeah, with the moon right here, just to give you that idea, you know, it's like Sirius is the sun of our sun. Two times bigger, 20 times brighter. It's fucking far away, you know, compared to the sun. But the energy that the galactic center is projecting on this, you know, pixelated data immersion, it's flowing out into the galaxy. It's hitting Sirius. Sirius is transmitting those frequencies, vibrations, that pixelated data, which is our program, right? Our holographic projection of program into our sun. Our sun has specific radiation that has actually changed. We're moving to through a part of this galaxy that we as a human species have never been before. You know, it's like I was wearing a Star Trek shirt yesterday and it's like, you know, boldly going where man has never been before. That's where we are. We're on the outer reaches of the photon belt after 2012 and the 26,000 year galactic alignment and the sun is absolutely receiving a brand new type of radiation. And what do you think that that does to us? We are experiencing a DNA recoding that we have never, ever received before. So to put ourselves back in the same category as past civilizations, cultures, or, you know, philosophies, it's just, it's crazy. You know, we're not even the same genetic makeup any longer. And we're not going to be from this point on, from a few years ago on. So it's like, when are we going to catch up? Because, <sighs> yeah. Oh, one more time. I want to reiterate this statement about that this cosmic influence, right? It produces a result in the consciousness of men everywhere and which during the process of initiation, that work you're fucking asked for, off for it, bring about a certain phenomena. And I just mentioned Alistair Crowley. And I've been talking a lot about Scorpio. So what does that mean, right? Shit, that means some super psychic powers that Pluto retrograde has given us full access to right now. Pluto's retrograde until September 22nd. That's why, you know, I created that Pluto retrograde special that is still going on if you want to do that instead. 30 minutes for $30 and we see exactly how to access those carryover of past lifetimes, your Akashic DNA. Where are your superpowers stored? That's what Pluto's telling us. And we definitely go into how to figure it out. So let's get into the degrees for today, okay? 
today the sun from inside the degrees i'm going to read and then i will read the sabian symbol for 14 degrees of kenta where the moon is and sirius is and it's like what oh my god okay let me get serious for real now okay so yeah three degrees of cancer a set of surgical instruments a self-schooling and using the mind appropriately you are learning how to dump overboard all preconceptions, all belief systems, every opinion based on previous experience. You are discovering how to think and act from a disinterested, steady and cool vantage point. And you are one pointedly intent upon grasping the central message that what you weigh down by negative basis by apprehension and by dark conviction come back to haunt you a thousandfold. While what you set free by precise and accurate readouts and follow through becomes such a blessing that you swim in it forever by witnessing exhaustingly just how negative intent and affirmation and affirmative intent work. Intelligence is refined to the utmost and the approach taken is optimized quintessentially and exquisitely. What? Totally didn't read this degree before. Wow. No, I mean, it all just comes back around. It's like the people that did the, you know, um, Elias Longsdale for the inside, the degrees, it's just like, wow, you know, they really just fucking nail it so often with the entire sum up. And yeah, if I could just read you that and be done with a daily, <laughs> I would feel so undone. That's why I break down every sentence, right? Because it's, you know, metaphorical and it's, it's something that we really need to peep game on. But that's self-schooling and using the mind appropriately. We talked so much about that yesterday and today. And yeah, that's why I mentioned again, the cult of ISIS. It's definitely not, this is knowledge. It's not, it's not anything else. I don't even know why I wanted to say that. That's weird. Hmm. I guess I perceive some future intentions or vibrations. <laughs> But you are learning how to dump overboard all preconceived, all belief systems, all preconceptions, all belief systems, every opinion based on previous experience. And legit, we just totally went over that. <laughs> new programming, new radiation, new DNA, new part of the galaxy. Woo! You know? All right. <laughs> you are discovering how to think and act from a disinterested, steady, and cool vantage point. So yeah, I mean, that's a good thing for cancer to do, to pick up on, to practice, you know, and not go towards a complete, just like off humanity switch. And you are one pointedly intent upon grasping the central message that what you weigh down by negative bias, by apprehension and by dark conviction comes back to haunt you a thousandfold while what you set free by precise and accurate readouts and follow through becomes such a blessing that you swim in it forever. I'm speechless. We so, so have gone deep into that. <laughs> you know, we, ha we really have. Damn. You know, it's like sometimes these really do just blow my fucking mental status. So, I mean, shit. <laughs> these negative bias and apprehensions, these dark convictions, yeah. That's what I was saying. It's like those of us who have this protection bubble of karma around us, we can't even have a sideways thought without getting fucked. You know, so it definitely sometimes makes you want to join the dark side. You know, just two fingers to the air, fuck it, I'm going straight evil. You know, I'm going straight bombastic on the universe. But it's like, no, because <laughs> cause if you, you know, set free by precise and accurate readouts and follow your blessings, you swim in them forever. I mean, shit. I know you guys are with me. You don't want to hear me say it again. <laughs> I don't want to hear me say it again. 
<sighs> by witnessing exhaustingly just how negative intent and affirmation intent work together. Wait, blurry contacts again. By witnessing exhaustingly just how negative intent and affirmative intent work, intelligence is refined to the utmost and the approach taken is optimized ex sequentially and exquisitely. Jobless. That's what's up. That is what's up. Superconsciousness, witnessing, no splitting of the brain. Go with a <laughs> good thought. I mean, shit. This is so... Yesterday. Still new moon vibration today. Like, not a big surprise, but somehow I'm still surprised. Yeah, take that fucking optimization of quintessential exquisitely intent work of affirmation within. As within, so without. As above, so below. I said it, damn. Okay, so let's get into the moon degree from the Sabian symbols. Um, what is her name, Linda Hill? I'll tell you at the end, cause she's also pretty fucking profound, right? So, 14 degrees of Cancer, where the moon is, conjuncting Sirius, conjuncting Mars. A very old person facing a vast dark space to the northeast. The symbol shows that you may be looking for some help or spiritual guidance, but it, might, it may be difficult to find through the usual channels. As we, as we become more enlightened, there is a greater ability to see spiritual truth in unexpected places. There's need, there needs to be a trust and courage that your inner wisdom is in touch with the higher truth. The vast dark space to the northeast is often the direction one looks for the spiritual guidance and looking towards that direction in the sky can bring an influx of creative and spiritual energies. Further, this symbolizes the desertion of native peoples by their government. The degree of serious. American Indians and native people that have been left in the dark. The need to have faith in the future. Seeing truth, stargazing, navigation, vast arenas. And the cautions for our emotional lunar moon today is staring into the void, a lack of purpose, or a feeling of abandonment, losing faith being distracted by government, exploitation, and abandonment. What more is there really to be said? It's actually really fucking crazy. <laughs> but yeah, the symbol shows that you may be looking for help or spiritual guidance, but it may be difficult to find through the usual channels. That's what we were talking about, all about it. Don't look at the surface. The surface doesn't mean shit. And don't believe people just because they say something. You know? Resonate. Do you believe it? This is a huge question for all of us to remember. Whenever we're going, you know, difficult to find, we might have to seek unusual channels. We gotta go deep. As you become more enlightened, there is a greater ability to see spiritual truth in unexpected places. And yeah, 100. Even the freaking just looking at your phone or a clock, it's like triple digits every time. There needs to be a trust and a courage that your inner wisdom is in touch with higher truth. Every, I mean shit, never mind. The vast dark space in the northeast is often the direction one looks for spiritual guidance and looking towards that direction in the sky can bring an influx of creative and spiritual energies. <sighs> Alright, so for those of you who did not see the daily yesterday, I hella put that in there about walking the fuck outside at night, looking up, you know, downloading an app on your phone so that you can literally get familiar with the constellations, literally know what planets and stars you're looking at and talk to them. Bring the shamanistic practice into it. And you know, who are the ones that practice shamanistic practices but the Native Americans, you know, <laughs> indigenous. Hectic, right? And that's one of the things, those from Sirius have lived many, 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 many incarnations here on this planet as Native Americans. The Mayans, they come from Sirius B, you know? So it's like, 
They went home to Sirius when they disappeared. They weren't extinct. They aren't extinct. But yeah, <laughs> and it further symbolizes the desertion of native peoples by their government. And shit, that brutality that we just went over endlessly yesterday and the wounds, you know, it's like pe <laughs> people have done some shit to others. Whole groups, whole governments, whole nations and whole worlds. It's, it's really profound, you know? And it's like whenever people, again, are hurt by that, it's <sighs> cancer moment. <laughs> So yeah, you know what this is trying to say. <laughs> the degree is serious, absolutely. American Indians and natives that have been left in the dark. <laughs> Damn if we haven't just gone through a public display of that shit in our modern day. 2017, what's the update, right? We need to have faith in the future, seeing true, stargazing and navigation vast arena so all of these mars aspects that we talked about playing out it's just dope but yeah you know the caution staring into the void with a lack of purpose and feeling abandoned losing faith being distracted by government or deserted sorry being deserted by government and exploitation and abandonment it's like i have this resistance to say it again I really do because I you know yesterday's daily was like over an hour long and shit this one's probably gonna be just about that long also so it's been said it's been said you know and you are all intelligent enough to put the pieces of the puzzle together at this point on this deep level you know the only thing I am gonna say again is as above so below how much more do we need to really show us that that's what astrology is all about is fucking deep so deep i absolutely love it i'm obsessed with it and yeah you know for all of you out there who are learning astrology it's like you really do have to be absolutely obsessed with learning astrology and realizing that you really are learning yourself as you learn it and as you learn yourself you are learning astrology it's a secular experience they they go hand in hand very well so i will be back tomorrow and i'm looking forward to another six months of dailies you know hitting that year mark and continuing to build these relationships with all of you and see what the future has to hold right because definitely looking forward to evolving and expanding with the collective consciousness and if we can really tap this quantum field that we've been talking about today in the proper way, we never have to speak another word in order to just profoundly affect the whole state of everything and everyone. So I'm here for it. And I actually do want to say a um, very big thank you from the bottom of my heart and soul to one of my beautiful viewers named Marvel Girl. And also Ivor Christofferson, super fucking amazing dynamic beings. I mean, just always making sure that the light shines in the comments below and doing their part in evolving humanity as well through their own frequencies and vibrations. You two stand out like just absolute beams of glory and I'm grateful for you. Thank you so much. In addition, everybody out there, this is my pleasure, <laughs> my obsession, and I'm happy to share it with you every day. And thank you for all those who actually listen to every word that I have to say, because I know it's a water sign rant most of the time. But yeah, I love you so much and job bless. To me, absorb my life, let me illuminate you, close your eyes.